So in today's tutorial, we're going to create this particle swarm effect. And uh, as you can see, it's colliding with the ground. And um, it's actually very simple to create. It's only going to take about five minutes. And um, so let's get started. So this is the Cinema 4D project here. And as you can see, it's very simple. Um, this is just kind of lighting stuff. So uh, all we've got is a, a cloner, a path, a plane, which is the ground, and then just three effectors, and then a, a physics simulation tag. So I'm basically going to start from scratch. So I'm just going to start a new project. And uh, first off, I'm going to create a cloner, so a cloner object, and then I'm going to create a pyramid and a small sphere. And I'm just going to dump these in the cloner object like that. I'm just going to resize them, so the sphere, I'm going to make it 8 centimeters. The pyramid, I'm just going to make it 22 centimeters all round, like that. So um, just turn on hidden line. Strange. All right. Okay. Next, I'm going to go into cloner and I'm just going to put this linear is actually fine. So I'm just going to create a path that we want the kind of particle swarm to follow. So I'm just going to create a helix path like this. And this is basically going to be used for our um, particles. Uh, it's basically a path our particles can follow. So I'm just going to move this up. This is where the ground is. And I want like a slight collision with the ground, but not too much. So I'm just going to move it up slightly. And then I'm just going to uh, increase the height like that. Just drag it out slightly. Just something like that. Next, I'm going to create a ground plane. Now this has to be a plane object, not a floor. So just a plane. And um, I'm going to make this 4,000 by 4,000 centimeters, pretty big, like that. Okay, so next I'm just going to create an effector. So click cloner and then go to MoGraph effector. And uh, we want the spline effector, like that. And uh, I'm just going to name this helix, path, helix, like that. And I'm just going to drag this spline below the cloner, not a child, just below it. I'm going to click on the spline effector and then drag and drop path helix into the spline uh, input box here, like that. And now we can see that the cloner is attached to that spline. I'm just going to turn off the plane just for now. Like that, we can see the cloner objects moving through the spline. Now I need some more uh, clones basically, so I'm just going to bump up the count on cloner like that. Give it quite a few, maybe a hundred, like that. And I'm just going to set offset to zero. So what we want is um, basically, we want this kind of uh, motion. So I just set the end to about 15% so the segments only about this long and then the start can be zero and then we just basically animate this with the offset slider like that so it's kind of traveling through that spline and then it goes back to the beginning which we don't want but we can just stop the animation like here so uh, right now it's really bunched together all these cloners the spheres and the pyramids so I'm just gonna click on cloner again and I'm gonna add a random effector like this, just put it below the spline. And now we can see that um, the clones are a bit more scattered, a bit more natural, like that. So I'm actually just going to key this at this point. So I'm just going to hold down control, click the circle next to offset, and then come to 120 frames, and end the animation about here, like that, 83%. And then I'm going to right click, go to animation, show F curve. I want this linear so I'm just gonna highlight this curve and then click on this linear tool here I'm just gonna play the animation back so this is basically the particles kind of swarming through the path but 
we can make this a bit more organic, a bit more random maybe. Just spread them out a bit more. Um, just gonna check the sides. It's mostly the Z position I'm interested in. And um, I'm just gonna increase the sizes slightly. So pyramids, I'll just make these 33. And then the sphere is about 12 centimeters, maybe like that. Now, just to add a little bit more um, kind of motion, I'm going to add a formula effector. So, highlight cloner, go to MoGraph effector formula. And that just makes it undulate slightly a bit more. Except uh, instead of scale, maybe I'll use 0.1 scale, but I'm just going to use very kind of small values, five for each uh, position value, maybe. Just so they're kind of just interacting a bit more with each other. Let me just increase scale slightly. Not too much though. Maybe some rotations possible. Yeah, so it's just a bit more kind of random like that. Now the next step is um I'm just going to bring the plane back in, click the cloner tag and then go to tags, uh, add a, sorry, simulation tags, add a rigid body tag, inherit tag, apply to children, individual elements, all, like that, and um, go to the plane object and add another simulation tag, just collider body should be enough. And I'm just going to play this back. Now, we can see the path, the swarms basically collided with the floor, but then it's instantly kind of exploded into lots of pieces. So we basically just want to add a bit of follow. So if I go to the cloner simulation tag here, if you go to force, there's a follow position and follow rotation. Now I'm just going to start to increment these values just very slightly, say so free, free. And now you can see it's kind of following the path a bit more. So getting closer to the kind of behavior we want. So I'm just going to increase that to five, maybe like that. And you can see that they're kind of colliding with the floor and with each other as well, which is pretty cool. So that's quite close to the kind of behavior we want. And if I look in the side view, uh, say the right view here, we can definitely see that they're kind of colliding with the floor. There's a few stray ones over here, but uh, you can just ignore those for now. And then finally, I'm just going to show you how to create a, a kind of multi-shader material. So I'm just going to go to uh, Gora Shading and then create a material. Let's create something new, matte. I'm just going to add that to cloner. And then I'm going to go into my color channel and choose um, MoGraph multi shader, like that. And then in multi shader, I'm just going to clear everything. Oops. Sorry, for texture one, I'm going to add a color. So just choose a color. Uh, say purple like that. I'm going to go up. Texture 2, I'm going to choose a color again. So choose something different, uh, yellow maybe, like that. Now nothing's happened. What I need to do is I need to go to mode and choose index ratio and now we're kind of mixing the different colors together. And we can add another color here. We could choose a gradient if you want to make it more interesting. Maybe not circular. Make this like a, I don't know, a green. Like that. And then just add one more. It's down here. Colorizer. I don't know what that does. No graph. We can add an effect. Sketch surfaces. Rust, maybe. So now we've got a rust. 
uh, texture as well in there. So I'm just going to move up, move back to the scene, and we can see all the different colors. They're even blending in between. It's kind of hard to see, but it's pretty cool. And then it's just a matter of adding a reflective texture for the floor and um, some lighting. Uh, for my animation, I basically turned on uh, global illumination quite high. So it kind of creates this kind of rainbow effect reflecting off the floor. But uh, yeah, that's the basics of it. And uh, thanks for watching.